In this video segment, we will be talking about the Pro Tools preferences. Now, inside of Pro Tools, there's a wide variety of preferences that could be selected to make your session run a little bit smoother and increase your workflow volume. Most of the preferences in Pro Tools I leave set to default, except for a few that are very important. Let's now go to the setup window and look at the preferences menu. Scroll down to Playback Engine, and you'll see here Hardware Buffer Size, set it to default to 256, and most people do not realize the host processors should be split for the amount of processors your computer has. If you have an 8-core, set it to 4-core. If you have a 12-core, set it to 6. This way, you're insured to get the maximum performance out of Pro Tools and your computer. A couple of other preferences that need to be checked in Pro Tools would be in the Preferences Setup. Click on the Mixing tab. You will now be viewing three separate sections in the Mixing Preferences. Let's look at the Default EQ and the Default dynamic section right here. I like to set my default EQ to the one I use the most, which would be the SSL channel. And under the default dynamics, I set it to the one I usually go to most, which would be the compressor bank by Mac DSP. Now, when you go to select an insert, these will be your default EQ and compressors at the top of the list. Let's now look quickly at the automation section. After right pass switch to, I like to leave it to touch. So after I complete an automation move, it switches back to touch. The coalesce trim automation basically leave after every pass. Now over to automation smooth data after every pass. I usually leave it to none for the degree of thinning and everything else basically leave the same. As we move over to the processing tab, on this page, Again, I don't really change much. Go to the operation page, leave it alone also. Moving over to the display tab, select category and manufacturer on the plugin tab. My preference for the sends is to have sends to default to infinity checked. That way, when you insert a send, the send is off, not sending any signal. Also, take a look at the latch prime and stop button. I like to leave the allow latch prime and stop button checked. That enables the automation to be active as soon as you hit play or spacebar. Include sends in trim mode. That's a preference you can change on or off. I like to keep it on. And the standard VCA logic for group members, I like to keep on. So really, it's just the after right pass switches. The setup here, and the most important one, your default EQ and your default dynamics which makes the workflow go much more smoothly when you're mixing. That's about it for the preferences. Now let's move on to the one most important feature that was ever put inside of Pro Tools. It's called delay compensation. What is delay compensation? Pro Tools provides delay compensation for automatically managing DSP delays that occur on audio tracks. With delay compensation enabled, Pro Tools maintains the time alignment between tracks that have plugins with differing DSP delays. The overall effect of these signal delays can vary from as short as one or two samples to as long as several milliseconds, depending on the type of processing or plugin that you've inserted on the track. Delay compensation should always be enabled during mixing and playback for optimal delay compensated sound. So now let's go to the setup menu, scroll down to playback engine, and you'll see here, the playback engine menu, there's this delay compensation setting. I normally set it to long. This way you're covered for no matter really what plugin you put on. Now that the delay compensation setting is all ready to go, all you have to do is activate it by going to the options menu. It's on right now, but if we go to the bottom and deselect it, you'll notice at the bottom of the mixer window, the windows default to dark, meaning delay compensation is not on. This is where you view the delay compensation is on or off and how much it's compensating for. Now it's back on, it all turns green. And you can see here, the top one is the delay indicator and the bottom one is track compensation indicator, how much the track is being compensated for, right there in the bottom. 
So if we scroll down our mixer window and look at other tracks, you'll notice they're all green except for the master fader here at the end. It's orange telling me the track exceeds the amount of total compensation available by Pro Tools. But since this is a master fader, it really is irrelevant. This universal audio peak limiter just has too much inherent delay for Pro Tools to be able to compensate for, even though right here, we're still set to the long setting. As I said before, it doesn't really matter because it's a master fader, and we do not have to worry about the phase alignment of audio tracks. One thing to remember, Pro Tools delay compensation only exists in HD systems. For you users on the LE platform, it's not necessary. The LE platform is a floating point processor and does not have delay compensation built in. We will talk more about delay compensation when we get into the mixing in later video segments.